Hey everyone, and welcome back. So we're gonna be talking about motion and usability. So we just kind of got over all these different types of misconceptions, and now we're gonna get into, you know, why it actually truly is important and why you should be using it all the time in your design process, you know, always thinking about it from the beginning. So let's get right into it. Now, it's unfortunate that many places, you know, treat motion as an afterthought because these beliefs are just untrue. More specifically, you know, when we're treating motion as an equal to UI animation, where UI animation is almost always used to provide just delight for users, or just like a cosmetic change, it just has no bearing on how successful the UX is. And, you know, when we're treating motion like that, we aren't doing it justice. Because motion is not that. Motion is actually behavior. And behaviors can only help or basically hinder the actual user experience. So motion supports usability in several ways, and this is the first one. When users interact with UI elements, what motion behaviors do they really expect to see? That's kind of what I'm thinking about. So does motion meet the expectation or does it cause confusion? When I ask myself this question, I'm thinking about how users perceive what an object is and how it actually behaves. And we really want to do our best as designers to minimize the gap between what the user expects and what they actually experience. So let's take a look at this small example I have here on the left. If we take a look at how the user interacts with this kind of little website, you know, if they click, they expect to see that image pop up, you know, go into that details page and we can make that transition much more easier with motion. Now, if we see that we're kind of going to loop back to the front here, we have a little bit of scrolling. And when we go back, we can have a transition that really helps navigate the user. Even how the different types of content comes onto the screen, we have that kind of cascading in a certain cadence. When users are typing in locations, we actually have this kind of pop-up that generally just pops up. So when a user actually interacts with an object, you know, we want to provide a great experience. And we also want to make sure that, you know, that experience is kind of expected. And if it's not expected, it's a delightful experience otherwise. Let's get on to the next way. Here's another one. Are interactions consistent across the actual user experience? Here, I'm thinking about actually a couple of things. User flow and the general actual consistency of the UX. So there's two kind of concepts here. There's intro continuity, you know, the continuity within a scene, like a little scene, whether that be just kind of like a one page or one little like micro interaction, and you have intercontinuity. And this is basically the continuity within a series of scenes that make up the total user experience. So we want to make sure that all our interactions are consistent. Now, if we take a look at this example from Open Door over here, we can see that the actual interactions that happened on like this kind of small level here and how they connect across both screens is very, very similar to how the transitions perform, how the different types of UI elements pop up onto the screen. It all feels like it belongs in one consistent system. Now, if we were to have like something bouncing here and then have something like swiftly come out out of nowhere on this page, like this little bar, then you know there is a bit of disconnect. So we can actually use motion to create like a consistent user experience. And that should always be at the forefront of your mind when you're using motion, you know, just to make sure not to overdo it or make sure that it's absolutely consistent to, you know, really help with usability when it comes to the smaller interactions and how we connect all those interactions to form a full user experience. Let's get on to the next one. Now, do the interactions and motion behaviors create a logical progression of events? Now, when I kind of read this back, I think our interactions and the motion behaviors they trigger tie to an actual progression of events that satisfies the user intent. So when a user is moving through an application, all the different types of things that are actually happening, do they seem logical? Do they seem rational? Like, do they actually expect those types of things to happen? When we design experiences, we need to make sure that the moments and events that we prototype 
and design, you know, they connect together in a logical way throughout the entire user experience. You don't want random things to actually like be popping up like I mentioned before. So let's take a look at this example here. So the user is going to click on this little object and there's a couple of different options that pop up. It's telling you the different options you can do with this current thing. And when it opens, there's a nice slow pan, you know, to kind of connect this image to this screen. So that's a very smooth transition. So it's very logical once we actually, you know, start using this app to understand that when I click this object over here, it's going to gently open up a page. There's not going to be a harsh transition. We know how to actually use the app much more easily because we're using actual motion to really help dictate how users use these apps. The last one, how do the spatial, aesthetic, and hierarchical attributes of UI elements relate to each other and influence user decision making? Now, this is another big one. How does motion really impact the various relationships of elements that exist? Let's take a look at this uh, little example. If we think about this website, it's kind of like a portfolio for a digital consultancy or agency, but they use motion in a very interesting way to really help dictate how users kind of read the content there, you know, interact with the content there. And if we think about the way that the different types of content in here and the UI elements are displayed, we can actually, you know, make those connections as to what should I be reading first? What should I be actually looking at? They give a full background to the phone and the way they transition the phone onto the screen allows you to kind of have much more context into what you should be looking at. Same with the titles here. We have the titles coming in first so you can kind of get understanding that this is the headline and the body copy afterwards. And these kind of UI elements, uh, these kind of paragraphs popping in later. It really makes for a delightful experience. 